All right, guys, so today we're going to start memory. This stuff is tricky, not impossible, but tricky. So on Friday, we talked about memory. It's an active system that receives information, right? Can we talk about this? Mm -hmm. That receives information from the senses, organizes it, alters it, and uh, stores some information away. That is what memory does, and it's something we use all the time. You remember your name, you remember your address. All those are memories that we use all the time. Thank God. Some of them have different weight and value, but they're all being used at the same time. So, incredibly important and incredibly powerful. So, next major thing that we talked about was our in process of memory encoding, storage, and retrieval. So, using your whiteboard, real quick, here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the shortest part of our memory? What is it called? The shortest part of our memory. Good. Come on, come on, come on. What is it, Madison? Sensory memory. Sensory memory. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the longest part of our memory? Good, good. Brittany. Long-term memory. On your whiteboard, please tell me how long does sensory memory last? <coughs> Good. What is it, Sophia? Four to five seconds. Four to five seconds. On your whiteboard, how many items can be held in your short-term memory? Yeah, of course. What is it? What is it? Valeria. Plus or minus seven on your whiteboard. Please tell me what is it called? Um, okay, so using our analogy of the library, when we have a book on the shelf, what is that called? We use the analogy of the library. When we have a book just sitting on the shelf, what is that called? Good. What is it, James? Storage. Storage on your whiteboard. When Mr. Penn gets a new book and he puts... The Dewey Decimal Number on the base of the book, what do we call that? Good. Matt. Encoding. Encoding. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called when I say the vocab terms over and over and over in my head trying to remember it? Good. What is it? Tyrese. Rehearsal. Rehearsal. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called? That Mr. Penn, when Mr. Penn puts the book in the appropriate, uh, when I need a book, sorry, when I need a book, I go to exactly where it should be according to the Dewey Decimal System and pluck it off the shelf. What is it? What is it? Peyton, retrieval on your whiteboard. Please tell me what moves information from your sensory memory to your short term memory. <coughs> What moves information from your short-term memory into, uh, from your sensory memory to your short-term memory? Good. What is it, Brittany? Attention. What moves information from your short-term memory to your long-term memory? No, not storage. How can storage it? That's a destination. Good. Madison. <coughs> Encoding is what moves something from short-term memory to long-term memory. Guys. Everything that I just talked about is the foundation of memory. Encoding. The more you encode it, the more it's going to go into long-term memory. Okay? That is the foundation of memory. If you don't understand that stuff, if you are struggling on those questions, you need to figure that out. Because if you don't get that, you're going to really have some issues when we come up with, especially the stuff of today. So... When we talk about memories, we're talking about the whole process of encoding, storage, and retrieval of memories. Okay, so I'm going to come back to your models. So what we're going to do is we're going to transition to the note paper, which I asked you to take out, and we're going to start with our different types of memories. Now the reason why it's tricky is that everything has multiple names, which is really not ideal. Everything has multiple names and breaks down into multiple different things. So, uh, everyone's going to have a blank sheet of paper, and we're going to start there. So, we're going to start with the easy stuff, and then we'll work our way into the harder stuff. So, first parts of memories. So, we're going to write memories. Types. And purpose. 
Okay, we're going to do our sensory memories. <coughs> okay, now when we talk about memories, there are two major categories. There are sensory memories and then there's long-term memories. So this is the first one. The first one is going to be iconic. Okay, it's a sensory memory. It's a visual, a visual memory held for one second, okay? Everything is being seen and held for one second. Now a perfect example of this, have you ever, so like you're sitting here in class and you're kind of just like looking around and something just catches your eye and you have no idea why it catches your eye, but you focus in on that and then you see something really weird. Hello? Has that ever happened to you? Okay. So when we talk about your eyes, your brain is processing everything that is going on in this room visually. The fact that, you know, I've been moving my hair around, that the kid in front of you has been moving their head around, that their shirt is in a weird fold, all that stuff that you see. If you look left to right now, look left to right, okay, you're going to see all this stuff. Essentially, your brain sees everything but cannot process it. Every single thing you've ever come across, hello, every single thing you've ever come across has gone into your iconic memory which means it's been in your head you just didn't give it enough attention to move forward isn't that crazy think of how many things you've seen but you didn't really see is that crazy no okay anyway so everything is being seen and held for one second but forgotten quickly if it doesn't receive attention. Are any of you people someone who always sees weird things and you you notice things that no one else notices? You're always like, what the hell? Okay. So that is your iconic memory is probably sharper than most people's. I'm pretty much oblivious to a lot of things. I try to be more aware, but I'm pretty oblivious in my own personal life at school. I try to be more aware. Um, but uh, I'm not very good at it. My husband, however, does. He has an ideic memory. An ideic memory or an ideic imagery is the rare ability to access visual memory after the fact. Okay, he's not perfect, but he's pretty damn close. We typically call this a photographic memory. Your husband's yeah, it's annoying as hell. Yeah, it's really annoying, actually. No, I know exactly where you left it. You left it three inches from the corner of the table. Damn. So annoying. But uh, it does him good at work. He's an, he's an accountant, so it works out well for him. Okay, so with an idea of memory uh, imagery, it means you can recall information longer than after one second. So he can tell me exactly what I was wearing the first day we met. He can tell me everything that I've ever worn, seen, and what outfits he absolutely hates that I wore like 10 years ago. He can tell me all of that. It's so helpful. <sighs> so annoying. All right, so iconic. Then you have echoic. Now echoic memories are based in your sensory. They are um, a brief memory of something, a person just heard. Last longer And iconic, and it is two to four seconds. Have you ever noticed it's easier to recall something you heard than something you saw? Really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, okay, so someone walks in here right now, you'll hear them say, Hey, Miss Smith of the front office, but would you be able to tell what they what they what they were wearing? No. Most people won't. Most people won't. And that's an echoic memory. So those are your sensory memories. They're very short, they're very brief. The reason is is because if your brain doesn't give them enough attention, should they hold on to it? No. No, there's no point. All right, so those are your sensory memories. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do a chart of your long-term memories. This stuff is where people get really confused, and I can tell you right now, this is where you're going to struggle on the test. <coughs> okay? You are going to struggle. So we're going to do long-term memories. I did because I was running out of room. And I, I write bigger for you people than I do. Okay. So, under the category of long-term memories, short-term memories doesn't really have, short-term memory doesn't have memories persistent because it's working memory, it's all everything you're um, conscious of. So under long-term memories, you have two major sections. Your first one is declarative. Or explicit. That is your first major category. Your other major category is procedural or implicit. So, on your test, they may ask you what type of memories of these. The answer could be declarative or explicit. You need to know they're interchangeable. There could be another question that asks you what type of memories of these you have to say, be able to say procedural or implicit. Implicit may be in the list and procedural will not be. They won't be in the same list, but you'll have to know that they're the same thing. Okay? When we talk about declarative, these are consciously known. or has to be recalled to be remembered. Parentheses, some effort required. So if this requires effort, implicit or procedural requires no effort. So once learned, it does not require thinking to do so. So what would be an example of procedural or implicit memories that you have? Driving. That once you learn, yes, driving is a perfect example. So let's write examples. First one, driving. Huh? Writing, absolutely. No one's sitting here. Okay, go down, go up a little bit, go up, start again. No one's sitting there doing that. By the way, my handwriting is much prettier when I do. Nice. Okay, what else? Nick? Okay, um, rehearse sports. Does that make sense? Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you play a sport, you're good. What else? What do you got, Madison? Um, like when I'm at work and I'm operator, I have to answer the phone. What do you do? I work at Target, and if oh, I'm nice. operator, that's the only thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Phone. Answering phones. Absolutely. Give me a... Yeah, what do you got, Blair? I don't know. I struggle on that on the reg. Let's <laughs> stay away from that one. It's not wrong, but... It, it goes a little too much closer to that. Smith? I think riding a bike, but that's like rehearsal sports. That's okay. Riding a bike is a good one. You'll always see that. Riding a bike. What else is another one? Mia? Okay. Yes. Yes. Just be careful with that because it starts getting into something else. All right. What else? Anything else? Okay. So at some point, you had to learn how to drive. You had to learn how to write. You had to rehearse the sport. You rode a bike. You walked. Yes? Now you don't really think about them. Like brushing your teeth, do you sit there and say, all right, 
Now let's turn on the water. Next step, put the toothpaste on the brus the brussels. Brush it? Bristles. Oh bristles is what I was going for. Brussels. Brushing teeth, all that stuff. Alright. Everyone understands how this works, yes? Hello? Mm -hmm. We're good. Okay. So under declarative or explicit, we have two new categories. The first category <coughs> is episodic. Okay, these are, and then you have semantic. Okay, episodic are events you or that person has experienced. Okay, the biggest thing you need to know about it is personal memories. Now the reason why it is under declarative or explicit episodic memories is because if I ask you what was your favorite Halloween costume, you got to put a little effort, correct? Well, last year I was a fisherman. Um, I was a penguin the year before. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that was fun. Um... And then I have to think back, okay? That takes effort, which is why it's under declarative and it's not implicit. Does that make sense? Hello? Okay, so um, examples of it would be your first kiss. Okay, your morning routine is under episodic. No one really knows what you do every single morning because no one cares. But you do know how you do. Your most embarrassing moment... Okay, what else? What else would be an episodic? Hello? <coughs> yes, Chris, um, gifts. Okay, homecoming. Since you're all good kids. Favorite movie? Ah, to a degree. Yeah, it gets a little weird. It gets a little weird. Huh? you remember homecoming? That's true. That's true. They're going to remember it better than you know. Huh? Mm -hmm. First award? Nah, I don't remember my first award. No. Kind of a big deal. So I have a lot of awards. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right, so semantic. So under declarative, these are things that take a second to recall. So take some effort. So episodic, it takes a, little se uh, takes a second to figure out your memories and stuff like that. Semantic. Semantics are your facts, general knowledge, our facts, general knowledge, and other things you had to try to remember. Okay, so first thing, an example of that would be George Washington equals first president. Okay, there's 50 states, three stages of memory. See what I did there? It's my content, you know, you know. Okay, capital of New York is Albany. Okay, so when we have declarative, it is information that takes a second to get in there, so that you have to be able to recall and kind of go through. All right, are you ready to make this harder? Okay, I'm just making sure I know exactly what I want. All right, does that make sense though? Alright, 
So let's transition back to my PowerPoint real quick. Make sure you have those separated for you. And this way it'll be a little bit easier to break down. So your sensory memory, you have a sensory memory of your conic, you have your ideic. Uh, you also have your echoic, which is echo, echoic, I hear it, stuff like that. So short-term memory, that's where we're going to pick up here. Now your short-term memory or working memory is the memory system which information is held for brief periods of time while being used. You should be filling this in. I think it's on the third page of your notes. Am I correct? Working memory is also known as short-term memory. If it doesn't say short-term memory in there, I'd write that down as well because it's a big deal. Yes. So... When we have short-term memory, we have selective attention. We have selective attention because we can focus on everything. If we have to focus on something, okay, that way it pulls it out of our sensory <coughs> input, from our sensory memory, and then brings it to our short-term memory. So it's called selective attention. Now you have to keep in mind there's going to be overlap in terms. So on your little chart we did, we just called it attention someplace else, it's called selective attention. When we talk about rehearsal, on my little chart that we did, I just said rehearsal, sometimes it's called maintenance rehearsal. Welcome to psychology. We have multiple terms for the same damn thing. And attention, selective attention, all the same things. So we can't get information from your sensory memory. Right now you're smelling, hearing, seeing, everything. The only way it gets from your sensory memory into your short-term memory is by attention. Okay, once it's in your short-term memory, then we can do different types of things. Now, the magical number of 7 plus or minus is going to be your minimum amount, which we've talked about before. When we talk about chunking, it's bits of information are combined in a meaningful unit or chunks to make it easier for us to process. What is a perfect example of chunking? Tyrese. Oh, you have to remember like a phone number eight, three, and like. Yeah, absolutely. The 334. Three, so 1 800 462 12 16. You know, whatever it is. Okay, Payton, what else? What the hell are you talking about? Oh, you have to get a bunch of pictures. No, no, that's something else. That's something else. What is telephone numbers are? Social security numbers are. When you get your when you get your dial for your lock, it's in three separate little ba uh, batches. All those different types of things. Um, the way we break up our dates, we do the month, the day, the year, and all that stuff. We chunk it down to make it easier for us to process. Okay, chunking is about breaking down. Your perfect examples are your telephone number and your social security number. Okay, you have three digits, two digits, and then four digits for your social security. Yes. Mm -hmm. So instead of having a total of what? No, not for your social security number. Okay, your bank account numbers are also broken up that way as well in order to help you remember it. Not that anyone does except for my husband. <coughs> okay, now maintenance rehearsal. Now maintenance rehearsal is us using things over... And over and over again. We're just telling them how exciting AP World AP Psych is today. Yeah. I bet. So maintenance rehearsal is the practice of saying some information to being remembered over and over and over again. This is you studying for a vocab quiz right before you take the test, and in your head you're saying all the terms you need to know, and then you get super cranky when I don't put the quiz up fast enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> because you're like, damn it, Ben. Okay, and you're like, ah, okay, and you get super, super cranky at me for it, okay? That is maintenance rehearsal. When you say it over and over again, so do you people don't, probably don't even, like, memorize or write down each other's numbers. You probably just send contact information to each other, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's happening to the world? Anyway, you used to have to ask for people's number. You don't know your husband's number. I know. <laughs> yeah, but that was way after high school. I was in college. That's when we first had it. Obviously. I remember some <coughs> I remember my parents' house number. The only person you need to know your number is your mom. Yeah, I know. But my mom doesn't really answer her phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I could be dying, but I remember my mom. She won't ever answer. And I'll just go straight to voicemail. I'll figure it out maybe two weeks later. All right? So... 
Uh, Meg Nutarisal is saying it over and over again. Like when you meet someone who's important, you need to remember their name. How stressful is that? In your head, you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It's Bella. It's Bella. Okay, here we go. Bella, Bella. And you're like, yes, Bella, how are you today? And she's like, oh, hello, how are you? In your head, you've said it a thousand times in order to help remember it. That is maintenance rehearsal. Okay? Now, duration of short-term memory lasts from about 12 to 30 seconds without any rehearsal. Okay? So, for instance, okay, Mia is going to introduce me to Bella. And I know Mia because we went to Europe together. Avi, we're tied together for life. So Mia's like, oh my god, this is my friend Bella. And I'll say, hey Bella, how are you? And she'll start talking. But then Bella doesn't say her name again, and I never say her name again, and then I have no recollection of what her name is. That happens to me all the time. Like at my second job, there's a lot of people's names I don't know, but I've been there for over a year. But they know mine. But I don't ever see it. Don't judge. No, you I have name tags at Target. It's not fair. Nobody ever wears theirs. Either people don't wear it or they leave it at home so they go put on somebody else's random name tag that they find. So, like, somebody's name could be Brian, who's wearing, like, a Ryan name tag, and it's so weird. So <laughs> then I call him, like, hey, Ryan, he's like, my name, I'm Brian. And it's like, so annoying. It's like, text. I'm, apparently, I'm the only person who actually, like, keeps my name tag with me at all times. Actually, it sounds like Superstore. Do you watch Superstore? Uh, no, I'm working on one on. No, no, no. Do you watch the NBC show, Superstore? Oh, no. It's actually very funny. It is so funny. Pretty, <laughs> <laughs> that was so hurtful. <laughs> so hurtful. Anyway, there's a lot of people I meet that I don't maintenance rehearsal or I don't say their name in my head and it will never come to me. Have a good day, guys. I'm like, my feelings are hurt.